Well, welcome to a Friday discussion. I'm here with my friend, Eric Ludy. Good to see you, sir. Hey, bud. It's uh, always fun to be in this spot with you. Yeah. We've had some good discussions. Yeah, uh, I, I love these times, actually. I've yeah. really I really enjoyed this process. Yeah. So, Well, today we have a, a very important question, which is, why is self-control so essential in the Christian life? So I think to unpack uh, self-control and its essentiality, uh, we need to sort of know what it is. Yeah. Uh, but it's essential, if, if I was going to give a, a simple pat answer to that, it's because the Christian life cannot function, grow, and mature without it, uh, because it will be overrun by the devil's agenda. And so God's agenda cannot be sponsored unless there is that self-control. And you'll see the same thing in a young child that lacks self-control, is if they, they can't take a discipline, because you, discipline is supposed to correct a child, but without self-control, they can't ever apply the discipline, and as a result, they can't mature and grow, so they continue in the same trough of, of challenge. Uh, the same, that's what happens in a Christian life. The, the term, think about this, self-control, would cause us to think that it means self-controlling oneself, like I'm controlling myself, and that's how most parents are going to teach their children right. uh, too. It's like, okay, you need to have self-control, which means, hey, get a hold of yourself. It's a part truth, and I think that's why it's a little tricky to know how to handle, but I wanted to unp unpack that sort of as my response to what you're saying is, because you know a lot about this too, even though you're the one asking the question. Uh, our Greek word is egreteia. That's what's going to be translated as self-control or temperance or self-government, depending on your translation. And so in all those situations, three very different words, I mean, self-government and self-control sound similar, but then temperance, what does that have to do with it? And so uh, I'm going to sort of throw the, the question back your way. Uh, why is this so essential in the Christian life? Why is egreteia essential? Like, what is egreteia? <clears throat> yeah, the way I love to explain it, like when you look at the fruits of the Spirit, yeah. right, it, it is so fascinating to me that that you start walking through the fruits of the spirit and you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's Jesus. It's the yeah. fruit of the spirit, love. Yeah. Yeah. He is love. He is the fullness of joy. He is patience. He is our kindness. He yeah. is our goodness. But you get to the very end of the fruit of the spirit and it says, and the fruit of the spirit is self-control. And it's, a, it's a, it is amazing. As you just said, it's like we flip the script and it's like we set aside, okay, well, the other ones are fruit of the spirit, meaning the, the spirit's going to have to produce this. Yeah. I now get to the self-control one and I go, all right, I, oh, I'm going to now do this, <laughs> which is so completely opposite of what it actually is hinting at. It is still a fruit of the spirit, yeah. meaning it's not so much me controlling myself as much as myself is being controlled yeah. and it's being harnessed by the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's still an action of the spirit of God in my life. And every single one of those fruit of the spirit are impossible for us to, in our own ability, produce the heavenly version of them. Right. And so isn't it safe to say that egretea would fall into that category? Yep. And so to explain it, because oftentimes I will start, before I can explain it to someone else, I need to explain it to myself. And I this has been a unique wrestling match one for me, to try and understand what this is, because it seems to have what I would say two dimensions of meaning simultaneous. And in a simple way, I'm going to say it, it means to kick out and to keep out. And so my, my metaphor that I've used to help myself is a boxing ring. Eric Ludy steps in this boxing ring and there's Goliath. I'm this little three foot tall, you know, dweebish character and there's Goliath, right? Over 12 feet tall. And so, and I can come up to him and punch his kneecap and he just sort of laughs, a hearty laugh and then kicks me. And I go flying into the bleachers. He's the one controlling my ring. And so if you look at that ring as the life of Eric Ludy, the body of Eric Ludy, and then I hear that I'm supposed to be self-controlled. So it's like, control your ring, Eric. And I'm like, doing my best. <laughs> but he's, he's more powerful than I am. And this is the entry point to what we understand as the gospel. You see, it's Eric coming to, him, to, his under, to the understanding that in and of himself, he's defeated. In and of himself, he can't control his ring. And unless his ring is controlled by righteousness, unless it portrays everything that is good and lovely and heavenly, well... Eric is going to be cut off from the presence of God. And so I have some serious problems because my ring is not controlled by any of those things. It's not godliness. It's ungodliness. And so what I need is Jesus to come into my ring. When I bring Jesus into the ring, now I have everything needed to begin to function in this thing known as egreteia or self-control. 
But if I think that it is me controlling, I'm actually missing the understanding of it. Self-control starts with understanding that he, Jesus, needs to be boss of the ring. And so what he enables me to do is he sort of sets out his, his big uh, punching arm. You know, it has a big glove on it. And he says, all right, grab a hold of this. And I want you to swing this. And But what we're swinging is not our own ability, our own grit and determination. We're swinging his power, his victory on the cross. And when we put our faith and our confidence in that, it knocks the Goliath character, the power of sin in the flesh, out of our ring into the bleachers. And he has those Tweety birds dancing around his head. Now, what that is, is it's kicking out. There's another dimension to Egroteo, which is to keep out, because you know what that uh, Goliath character is going to do? It's going to try and sneak back into the ring. And so self-control is not just the removal or the purging, the getting out of that which is harmful, but it's the keeping out of that which is harmful. And that's where the word temperance comes in. So when you see the the translation for that word, and someone says, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is, and then they have this word temperance, and they're like, no, that's supposed to be self-control. What are you putting temperance in? It's actually a good translation. It's just, it's because this word has so much, you know, dimension to it. And that is, it's a word like, we use the word temperate to describe a temperature range, like San Diego is a temperate climate. In other words, it doesn't get too hot or too cold. It sort of is always sort of at that good level. And that's the way our soul is supposed to be. It's always supposed to be like 70 degrees and sunny. And yet the devil wants to interfere in that. And so when the devil sticks his hand on the ropes to try and climb back into the ring, there's an alarm system that goes off in our soul. And it's called temperance. It's egrotea, which means alert. There is something that is trying to enter into your life or it's trying to make you too hot or too cold. You see, God wants us to be uh, that sounds bad because I need to change my metaphor <laughs> because he doesn't want us to be lukewarm. God wants us to be hot. Oh, maybe this is trying to cool us down. There maybe you go. that's that's there you a better go. way of saying it. And so, but it gives us an alert to recognize that we are our the temperance meter is or the temperance gauge is going off. Something is not right. And so then if we respond to that with the authority of Christ, the same authority that kicked it out in the first place, we respond to that alarm with that authority, it keeps out the devil as well. So it kicks out and keeps out. I love that illustration. And I think it's important too to recognize, I think we as the modern church have forgotten the power of our God. In other words, to use your metaphor, it's like we walk, we're, we're in the middle of this boxing rink and we look at that Goliath and we actually have more faith in the power of our enemy yep. than we do in the power of our God. Yep. And so we actually don't think we actually have any authority or any self-control because we keep getting smashed by Goliath. And yet yeah. we need to remember that greater is he who is within us than he that is in the world and that he has allowed us, enabled us in Christ Jesus to be more than a conqueror. Amen. But a lot of it comes back to this idea of functioning in that self-control as you're talking yeah. about, where it's not just thinking, all right, I'm going to be overrun by sin, but recognizing that he has already achieved the victory. Amen. And then in that authority, doing your kick out and keep out, yeah. which I think is so essential for the Christian life. And so the idea, the word self-control is misleading because it causes us to think that we are in control of our life, but it's partly true. Right. And that is, for self-control to function, we must first be controlled by Jesus. The Holy Spirit must control our life. When we come under the control of the Holy Spirit, then we now have authority, because he's controlling us and we have the authority of his name, to now control our body. And so it is actually, self is in control, but because it is being controlled by the Holy Spirit. So it's almost like we were the but we were the king of our estate. We got booted out of being the king, and now we're the head butler. He's the king. But we have control over the property, and we're still responsible for it, but out of the command and the authority of the king of the estate. And so we need to still function by telling our body what to do. We need to bring our body under, as Paul says it, and that's the entire idea of uh, egretea. It's like, no, body, you don't rule me. I rule you. But the reason I can rule you is because I'm being ruled. Hmm. I think it's, <clears throat> I think it's a, an encouragement, too, that, that even if we're just getting started in this idea of self-control, it is a fruit of the Spirit. In other words, fruit doesn't just happen on a tree overnight in its full bloom or full produce, I don't know what the word to be, but it's not in full season. Yeah. It fruit tends to grow. And so I think just as an encouragement for those who are listening, you know, even if they just take one small step mm -hmm. in taking that 
submissive position under Jesus, but that authority position in his name over yeah. their life, the more you begin to do that, the more you begin to actually see it function. And the more you actually get excited that it's like, whoa, 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 my life can actually live on a whole nother level, not because there's something special about me, but because I'm in Christ and he is in me and I'm actually uh, functioning as he has called me to function in his, Amen. In his grace. Amen. So what an amazing truth. That's good. Thanks, Eric.